Hello again everyone, Mr. Cruz here with another review for you, this time, Robin Stats Chapter 4 Test Review. Uh, we'll be talking about some different types of probability, combinations, permutations, Venn diagrams, all that good stuff, alright? Hopefully to make sure you do well on your test. Let's get started. First question, obviously, is a Venn diagram question. A leading cosmetics manufacturer advertises its products in three magazines, Cosmopolitan, McCall's, and Ladies Home Journal. A survey of, this should say, 500 customers by the manufacturers revealed in the following Venn diagram. So there's some numbers. The big thing that you need to know about Venn diagrams is if you see a number out here in a far circle, these numbers are people who only saw it in that magazine. Okay? They only are in that part of the circle. If you get further inside, such as these two numbers, you'll notice they are at the intersection of two journals. 26 is in between Ladies Home Journal and McCall. 14 saw it in Cosmo and Ladies Home Journal. 46 saw it in both Cosmo and McCall. And the very center one, 38, saw it in all three. Okay? So, we just have to keep that stuff in mind. First question asks, how many of the customers saw the manufacturer's advertisement in at least one magazine? Well, in at least one magazine would include they just saw it in one magazine, they just saw it in two, or they saw it in all three. That would be every single one of these numbers added together. So if you type those in your calculator, you do get a total of 410. Those are the people that saw it in at least one magazine. By the way, a follow-up question could ask how many saw it in no magazine. You would just take 500 minus 410. All right. How many customers saw the advertisement in exactly one magazine? Make sure you're looking for these words. Exactly one magazine. Well, that takes out the person, the people in the middle because they saw it in three. It also takes out these people who saw it in two. So the only thing that's left are the three people along the outside. And if you add those together, I believe you get a total of 286. All right. Here's where we start getting to the good stuff. A license plate must have two letters, not I or O, followed by three digits. The last digit can't be zero. How many possible plates are there? The easiest way to do this one is to do counting principle. You'll notice we're supposed to have two letters and three digits, so I'm going to put five blanks. Basically, the license plate is going to contain five uh, characters, if you will. Uh, so we'll start off with the two letters. It must have two letters, and they can't be I or O. Well, there's 26 letters total in our alphabet, but I and O are off limits. So how many ways can I fill the first spot with a letter? Well, there's 24, because I'm not including I or O. Now, you'll notice this doesn't say anything about repetition not being allowed. So we can actually have the same letter twice. But again, still can't be I or O. So 24 possible letters can go in the second spot. Now we can follow by three digits. Well, the last digit can't be zero. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind. The other two digits doesn't matter. There are ten total digits, zero through nine, right? So these two spots can both be filled ten ways, because I can put any digit there, but the last digit cannot be zero. So that means it can be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, which gives me nine possible choices for the last digit. All you do is multiply these together, and that'll get you your grand total number of possible license plates, which is 518,400. Quite a lot. Number three, a two-person committee is to be formed from a club that had eight men and five women in its membership. If the committee must have one man and one woman, how many such committees are possible? Please underline the word committee. Remember, committee is one of those keywords that tells you if order matters or not. Does it matter if I'm on the committee or Mrs. Kramer's on the committee or vice versa? No, because we're both still on the committee. So order doesn't matter. That means this is a combination question. Combinations. Combinatorics. Uh, so let's start with the men. We have eight men total, and we are picking one out of those eight. So that would be eight choose one times. We have five women total, and we're choosing one. So that would be five choose one. Multiply those two together, you just type them in your calculator. 8C1 is 8, 5C1 is 5, so 8 times 5 is 40. There are 40 possible committees. Easy so far, right? 
All right, number four is a good one. Uh, in how many ways can 10 true, false, and eight multiple choice question tests be answered if there are four choices for each multiple choice question? This is probably should have a question mark at the end. All right, there are several ways you can do this. I would again suggest doing the counting principle. I think that's the easiest way. In how many ways can 10 true, false questions? Let's start with that. So again, think of 10 blanks. 10 blanks on a test, if you will. Well, each question is true, false, which means there's two possible answers for each one, right? Either true or false. So I'm going to put a two in each of these blanks because I could fill each of these questions with one of two answers. Same thing with the eight multiple choice part. Let's add eight multiple choice questions. Each multiple choice has four possible answers. So I'm going to put a four in here, right? And then your task is just to multiply all this together. Now, do I really want to type all that in? I mean, I could. It'll take me a little bit of time. The easier way here is to go, well, there are 10 twos, right? So I'm taking two to the 10th power. This is what exponents were invented for, right? Repeated multiplication. And then there are eight fours, so it'll be four to the eighth power. Multiply those two together and you get a grand total of 67,108,864. And remember folks, this is a test, right? Which means uh, that there's only one correct answer key, right? So you have a one out of that number, one out of 671 million or sorry, 67,108,864 ways uh, to get that correct, which is a very low probability. So good luck guessing all of them. <laughs> all right, number five. There are four math books, five history books, and two science books that need to be shelved. How many possible arrangements? Underline the word arrangement. That means order matters. So this is a permutation question. Are there for the books to be placed on the shelf if the math books have to stay together? This is important right here. The math books want to stay together. They're one thing. We had several questions like this, right? The seniors want to stay together. There was um, some way to line up in a fire drill where two people wanted to stay together, right? It's all the same type of question. So the math books must stay together. These four are one thing. Think of them as one book, if you will. Okay. But first, within that one book, there are ways to arrange the individual books, right? So I'm going to put 4P4, because this is the number of ways to arrange the math books alone. I could put geometry, algebra 1, algebra 2, pre-cal, or I could do pre-cal, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. You know, you get the idea. So 4P4 ways to do that, times the number of ways to arrange everything, okay? Well, how many things are there total? There are two science books five history books, and one block of math books that have to stay together. So total, that's 1 plus 5 plus 2, which is 8. There are 8 total things, groups of books, if you will, we're putting on the shelf. And of course I'm choosing all 8 because I don't want to leave anything off the shelf. And that's all you do on this one, you just multiply those two together, 967,680. Ways this problem could change. Uh, I could also say I want the history books to stay together. Well, what would happen is I'd still have the 4P4. I would also make sure I have 5P5 because that's the way to arrange the history books. Uh, but then there would be, what, one, the history books would now count as one, so that's two, three, four. There'd be 4P4 ways to arrange everything. So that would change just a little bit, okay? How many different ways, different, I think this is what this is supposed to say, are there to arrange the letters of the word aggregate? All right. Well, first, let's count how many letters there are. Notice I said arrange, so order matters. So once again, permutation. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine letters. So we're going to do nine P nine because I'm arranging every letter. But there's one little problem. How do I know if I'm just shifting these two letters, right? It'll still look the same, won't it? So it'll still be a same arrangement. It won't be a different one. So I have to make sure I divide by any repetition that there is factorial. Okay. You will notice there are two A's. So I am going to divide by two factorial. 
there happen to be three g's, so I'm going to divide by three factorial. And I believe there happen to be two e's as well, so I'm going to divide by another two factorial. Remember, you can type this all in your calculator at once. Just make sure you use parentheses to uh, make sure your calculator knows what it's doing correctly. Anyway, if you type this in, you should get 15,120. Uh, I'm not really going to spend a whole lot of time in this video covering how uh, covering how to do things on your calculator. Okay, if you need help with that, please see me in the morning, all right? All right, let's see how much farther we can get. I'm not sure how much time we have left. Okay, we've got a few minutes. Uh, how many ways can five white, six blue, and three orange marbles be lined up in a row? Lined up in a row. Hey, once again, that's a permutation question. Making sure we know when to use what. Um, total marbles, 5, 6, and 3 adds up to 14, so that's 14. I'm arranging all of them, so I'm picking all 14. But once again, you will notice, how do I know if uh, the first white is in the first spot, or it's maybe the second white marble that's in the first spot? Is there a difference between them? No. Another way you could think about this is, what if I wrote them out in letters, right? 6 blue three orange. Now it looks like question number six, right? How do I arrange those letters in a different way? I have to make sure I divide by any repetition factorial. So there's five identical white ones, there's six identical blue, and three identical orange. So I have to make sure I divide by those things. Once again, make sure you use parentheses so your calculator does things correctly. You should get 168,168. All right. From a standard deck of cards, how many different five-card hands can have exactly four cards from the same suit? Remember, a lot of these card questions where you're picking hands are combination questions, right? Um, order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I draw the two of spades first or if it comes later. I still have it in my hand, so order doesn't matter. Uh, but I want exactly four cards from the same suit. That means I want four hearts, or four spades, or four clubs, or four rhombi, right? So, four cards from the same suit. So first I have to pick a suit, right? Well, there are four suits total, right? Hearts, clubs, spades, and rhombi. I am choosing one of those suits, right? So four combination one, that's the number of ways to pick a suit. And then, from that suit, there are 13 cards total, right? Two through ace, and I'm picking exactly four of them, so I want just four of those 13. But then there's still a way to pick the last card. Here's where it gets interesting. Since I only want exactly four cards from the same suit, I don't want that fifth card. I don't want to flush, right, uh, for some reason. I just want four. That fifth card cannot be from those 13, right? It cannot be one of those 13, which leaves me... 52 minus 13, which is 39 cards left in the deck. 39 cards that are not in this suit, okay? And I'm only picking one of those 39. Multiply all those together, that gives you 111,540. Again, the trick on that one is to remember, even though you only picked four cards, so it's tempting to put 48 here, I can't pick another card that's from that suit, so I have to take out all 13 now, okay? I think we might be able to get the next question in real quick. Two cards are selected without replacing, uh-oh, without replacement, the first card from a standard deck. Find the probability of selecting a king, and then, circle the word and, and then selecting a queen. Anytime you see the word and, that's a multiplication rule question, right? Multiply, multiply, multiply. A lot of people used and on the last quiz, so be careful. So I'm picking two cards. Uh, I want a probability of selecting a king, and then selecting a queen. So, how many kings are there in a deck? There are four kings, right? The king of hearts, the king of clubs, king of spades, king of rhombi. Out of 52 total cards, I said it was a multiplication problem. These two are dependent upon each other, right? Dependent because we're not replacing, which means the second probability will change based on the first. What's probability I select a queen? Well, there are still four queens. Picking a king doesn't change that. But what it does change is the total number of cards in the deck. I've already picked one, so it has to be 51. Multiply that together, you can do a little reducing. I believe you get 16 out of 2652, which reduces to 
4 out of 663. And there's your probability. All right, join me again in the second video. We'll finish this up. See you then.